guys ready to worship? <laughs> We're bringing back an oldie. you move. 
Would you open up the doors and let the music play? Let the streets resound with singing. Songs that bring your hope and songs that bring your joy. Dancers who dance. Upon injustice. 
Jesus, you, you're worth it all. Every nation, every soul, Jesus, you're worth it all. around your throne who can know your glory so high above and slain for us you alone it all revolves it all revolves around your throne can know your glory so high above yet slain for us you alone are worthy and the praise is yours and the praise is yours you're the one we bow before
raining over us as we lift you up. You will reign forevermore. The praise is yours. Come take it, come take it all. Come take it all. Come take it all, God. And I'll stand in awe of you. Yes, I'll stand in awe of you. Oh, I'll stand. truly do stand in awe of you, God. We are in awe of who you are, of what you do, of your heart, of your mercy, of your compassion, of your healing presence. We are in awe of you, God. We're in awe of you just even being here in this room right now. The God of creation, you created heaven and earth and you're here. We are in awe of you. And I ask, Lord, that tonight you would even open your word to us and you would expand our hearts to know you more. But we invite you to increase. 
we're in awe of your word, God. We're in awe of your word. We're in awe of you, living word of God. And so we invite you, living word of God, to be in this room, to walk among us, to touch each of us. Lord, I pray that each person would have a personal one-on-one -on -one encounter with your spirit tonight. Lord, that's what we're asking you for. So Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. And we invite you. Thank you, Lord. And people watching by streaming, we welcome you. And I know some of the Australians, Rory and Shireen, said they were going to be watching this Tuesday morning because it's Tuesday morning. They're live right now. So if you're watching, hi. So the, last week, Rick asked me to share if I wanted to share Monday night. And I, I could always, like all of us, we could always share any number of things. I mean, there's a lot of stuff inside that could come out, but I always ask him. So I asked him, what do you want me to share? And so days were going by and, excuse me, Saturday, I told Rick, I have nothing, like nothing's coming to me. He said, well, let me know now so I can prepare. And I said, no, I'll get something. I just don't have anything right at the moment. But so then yesterday morning, I got up early and I was just saying, what do you want to say? And I felt like he said, I want you to talk about worship. And so then I start thinking, okay, you know, worship, I, I can talk about worship. Um, but it totally took a different turn than I was thinking it was going to take. And so I have six scriptures that I'm going to focus on. That we're going to, I'm going to read all six of them. You know, when they wrote the Bible, there were no verses or chapter breaks that came later to help us so that we could you know, easily find a scripture. So I'm reading these, the end of Romans 11 and the beginning of 12, 12 as one continuous thought. So Romans 11, 33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments. How unfathomable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who became his counselor? Or who has first given to him that it might be paid back to him again? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. And I heard a long time ago as a young Christian, whenever you see therefore, you need to ask God what it's there for. And so, and it's really true. So in light of everything Paul said in the first 11 chapters of Romans, this is what this is there for, but I'm going I'm to come back to that in a few minutes. Verse 33, oh, the depth of the, of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. And we did a workshop at the conference I did on um, soaking in the word, and I used part of the scripture. But um, oh, the depth, stop and think about, oh, the depth of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. God is so full of wisdom, so full of knowledge. Sometimes we forget that when we're going about our day. We forget he is full of wisdom. He is full of knowledge. There's nothing he doesn't know. There's no decision he ever makes that's unwise. He is full of wisdom. He is full of knowledge. There's riches in that. Just ponder that. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable his ways. And judgments means an administrative decree, the result of evaluation, a judgment, a verdict, authority as in a legal action, an administrative decree. When Jesus says something, whatever it is, we don't have any right to say, why did you do that? Or what were you thinking? And sometimes we do that, maybe not so boldly, but in our mind we think, what? He is full of wisdom. He is full of knowledge. What he says is good is good, and what he says is bad is bad. End of story. And we're living in a time where the world has literally gone nuts 
uh, really, they're calling evil good and good evil. It's, it's a crazy time, but oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments. His decrees, you can't search them out. You can't know, you can't come to the end. Unfathomable are his ways. He does things that we could think about and think about and ponder and ponder. We'll never come to the end of it. He's beyond really understanding because he's God. He is so deep and so full of wisdom. I want to look at a few scriptures in Job. I know Job is a book people go, Job, but it's one of my favorites, actually. Which is, I was going to say weird, but no, that's not weird. It's God's word. Okay, Job 28, 28. And to, so Job is having this conversation with God, and then God says, and to the man he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to, to depart from evil is understanding. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. We, like I said, this world has gone crazy. And we think sometimes what God calls evil, we think, well, it's okay. Because generations have gone by and said it's okay, but it's not okay. The fear of the Lord, that's wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. And then Job 38. This is actually a really, really good chapter. I'm going to read verses 1 through 11. Just listen to this. So Job goes through, you guys know the story, Job goes through everything, and then God comes to him and says this, and I, I can just picture standing before God, just think if you were Job and you hear this from God, it's terrifying. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Now gird up your loins like a man, and I will ask you, and you instruct me. Can you imagine God saying that to you I think all of I would just be going uh oh. really where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth tell me if you have understanding who set its measurement since you know or who stretched the line on it or what were its bases sunk or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy or who enclosed the sea with doors when bursting forth it went out from the womb? When I made a cloud its garment and thick darkness its swaddling, swaddling band. And I placed boundaries on it and set a bolt and doors. And I said, thus far you shall come but no farther. And here shall your proud waves stop. Think about that. God set a door and bolts and he said to the waves, you'll come this far and no further. Where were you when God did this? So sometimes when we're going through things and we question God and we say, why are you doing this? Why did you allow this? Well, where were you when I did all these things? And it's okay to ask God questions. There's a difference between asking questions and questioning. Asking him questions is good, but questioning him like, who do you think you are? We can't do that. That's, that's a different thing. And so he tells Job, where were you? And then look at, at the end of this, chapter 40, verse 6. Then the Lord answered Job out of the storm and said, now gird up your loins, he says this again, like a man, I will ask you and you instruct me. Will you really annul my judgment? Will you condemn me? Gosh, this is just like, oh my goodness, we do this all the time. Will you condemn me that you may be justified? Or do you have an arm like God? And can you thunder with a voice like his? I just can hear that in our earth today. Will you really annul my judgment? Will you condemn me so that you are justified? These are strong words, but in, and I'm coming to a point with this all. Um, God's amazing. He loves us immensely. But he's God. He's God, and he has a right to say what he wants. His judgments are unfathomable. Go, bu go back to Romans. Romans 11. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who became his counselor? Who has first given to him that it might be paid back? Who has the mind of the Lord, and who has been his counselor? Can you imagine going to God and giving him advice? Okay, and we laugh, but... I bet you we've all sort of done that when we get in a situation and we think, well, if I was God, I would have done it this way. But um, who has known the mind of the Lord? Verse 34. Or who has become his counselor? 
And has anybody ever given him something so that he owes us now because we gave to him and now he's going to pay us back? No. <laughs> For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. For from him and to him and through him are all things. And then Paul says, therefore... So what is that there for? In light of these other things, and look at, flip back your page to 11, verse 21. In light of this, Paul's saying, 11, 21, for if God did not spare the natural branches, Israel, he will not spare you either. Behold the kindness and severity of God to those who fell severity, but to you, God's kindness. If you continue in his kindness, otherwise you will also be cut off. And that's hard. And we could say, God, how could you be so strong? But it's his word. He said it. So therefore, because of that, now live like this. And this is the part that just is, ah. Uh, Therefore, I urge you, and this, you can just feel him begging you. He's saying, I'm begging you. I am begging you. I urge you. I'm pleading. It's not just a little thing. I beg you because of this, because I know things about God. I know the kindness. I know the severity. Therefore, I beg you with everything in me, Paul's saying, I beg you by the mercy of God, present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And this is what I felt like God said today. I want you to talk about worship. And my first thought was what we did tonight. I love to worship God. I love to stand before him and sing. But when he says this is a service of worship, he's not talking about singing songs. He's talking about saying, you are God and I am not. I worship you. Whatever you say it's okay with me because you are God and I am not. And Paul says, I beg you. I can hear this today, like I said. I beg you, don't listen to the world. Listen to God. Present yourself as a living sacrifice. You know, in the Old Testament, they brought sacrifices of animals and they killed them. He's saying, I beg you, present yourself as a living sacrifice. And when I was reading this yesterday morning, I went to Genesis 22, 5, the story of Abraham. And I'm going to look, look at that real quick. Genesis 22, verse 5. It's really interesting. You know the story, Abraham's going to sacrifice his son, 22.5. So Abraham, you know, he's going up in, the eight, in verse 5. Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey, and I and the lad will go over there, and we will worship and return to you. We will worship and return to you. He didn't pull a little harp out of his sack and start singing, how great is our God. He worshiped by what Paul's begging us to do, presenting ourselves as a living sacrifice. He said, God, I'll do whatever you say, even if you say, kill the son of promise, I'll do it because I'm worshiping you. That's what worship is, is when we come before him and say again, you are God, I am not. And when he makes us go through situations, there's not a person in this room who hasn't walked through a tough situation, some more tough than others. But I have walked through tough things where the enemy tried to break me. But I worship God through it because he's worthy and he's good. And I may not know why he allowed certain things, um, but I wouldn't say to him, what were you thinking? Because I know he's God. And that's what, he, that's what he desires of us is to worship him no matter what. Not just sing a song of praise, which is good. But to worship him as a living sacrifice. To come before him and worship him. Back to Romans 12. By the mercies of God, I beg you, worship him. Worship God. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. There's a test you can take to see if you're being conformed or transformed. When you are out in public or you turn on the news and all the stuff 
everything in the world today where the world says, well, this is right, but the Bible says it's wrong. If your heart aligns and says, oh yeah, that's right, love is love or whatever it is, and it doesn't conform to this word, then you have conformed to the world and you are not being transformed from glory to glory. And, it, and you need to ask yourself, do I think more about what the world says, good, bad, right, wrong, or do I line up with this? Even if the whole world says this is right, but this says it's wrong, it's wrong. End of story. We all know that, but we've been programmed. And the, the devil now is trying to program, he has been for generations, people to say it's okay. And the reason why is because he knows if we don't worship God and really give everything, that we could be cut off. He says, Lord, Lord, didn't I prophesy in your name? And those are the people who knew him, but he said, I didn't know you. So I feel like he just, when he said, I want you to talk about worship, uh, my first thought, like I said, was just to go to happy songs. But I feel like he said, talk about what is worship. How do we really worship him? How do we honor him as the king, as the Lord, like Job? Does he have to come to us and say, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? And will we worship him if he does come and say that? Or something like that, if he challenges us? Um, he's serious. Eternity is forever and it's serious. And so be transformed, not conformed by the renewing of your mind. And so you say, well, that all sounds great. How do I do it? How do you renew your mind? One really good way is to, I, this is what I say over and over, know this book, you will begin to think like him. Your heart will begin to align with what his heart says is good. And even the great things, how much he loves us, he loves us so much, will get that in us. Wow, I am loved by God. Other people might be doing this or that, but I am loved. His mercy, see, it's not when we're striving with something, or struggling with something, um, like if you get angry and say a cuss word, and you say, oh, I don't want to say that again, and then the next day you do it again, but you say, oh, I'm so sorry, I did it again. That's okay, because he loves us, and he's, he knows we're made of dust, and he's working with us, but when we say, I'll cuss if I want to, who do you think you are, and whatever it is, that's when he comes, that's when it, that's scary. So, and that's just an easy example, but, so I felt like he said, Talk about worshiping me and what it really means. You say, Lord, Lord, but you don't do what I say. And um, so just to encourage, it doesn't sound that encouraging, but it is encouraging. <laughs> to do what he says, it's not that hard. I mean, like when you, that story of Abraham, if God told me I have four sons, if he told me to do that, that would be, oh my gosh, that would be a struggle. I mean, all of us, that would be a struggle. And he will ask us, to do things that are a struggle, but when we're really worshiping him in spirit and truth, then we say, yes, Lord, again, you're God, I'm not, I'll do what you say. And so I just want to pray for us before we pray for you in the healing rooms and ask God to give us grace because I don't have grace to fully do this and I can't do this unless God gives us grace. So if you, if you feel like standing, stand, just stretch your legs and I'm just going to pray for us. So, Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the depth of riches of your wisdom, of your knowledge. You know everything. You're so full of wisdom. Your judgments. Lord, when you make a decree, that's it. It's full of wisdom. Even if my brain doesn't understand it, doesn't matter. You are full of wisdom. And, Lord, I ask that you would come to us, to each one of us tonight. Lord, come to me. God, would you give me a revelation of your lordship, of your kingship that I haven't known before? Would you allow my mind, Lord, would you transform my mind in any place any of us are in a place of conforming to the world? Would you wash us from that confirmation and would you fill us with transformation? Would you transform us, God? Would you teach us to worship you? Like, like Paul said, I beg you, I beg you, present yourself before God. Stand before him. Stand before him and worship him. So Lord, come and give us that transforming power from heaven. Give us that grace to do what you say. And I thank you for it, God. Teach us about worshiping you, Lord. Amen. Whew. 
That's really good when you think about it. Those six scriptures, if you get just that block from Romans 11, 33 through 12, 2, it has a lot in there. It has a lot in there. I say this a lot too, but you could focus on that for a year and not come to the end of it. But just those six scriptures are so, so deep. If we got that down, we'd, we'd all be doing great. So we're going to pray for you in just a couple minutes. I'm going to give a few announcements. Um, and then this room becomes a soaking room. We're going to put on some music um, up there, some worship music. And if you need to talk, you can go in the bookstore area so that people can <coughs> be in here and just um, have God encounter them before prayer. If God brought you here tonight, it's because he wants to teach you. Uh, not teach you, well, he does that too, but he wants to heal you, I meant to say. He wants to heal you. He wants to free you. He wants to do whatever you came here for. He's not a tease. He doesn't bring you here and then say, ah, just kidding. He wants to touch you. So when you go into the room to get prayed for, know that he's already there waiting for you. And in his will is to heal you, to free you, to give you what you want. So um, I left my sheet in my office, so put up the announcements. Rachel made me a nice sheet, and I didn't bring it in here. Okay, Healing Room School of Supernatural Life. You can go on our website. It's starting soon. We have year one and year two. It's a nine-month program, only two days a week, Tuesday and Thursday evening. That's starting soon. Okay, Freedom from Freemasonry, September 15th, 9 to noon, and you can uh, register online also. Are you doing that, Graham? Yep, Graham Walsh will be teaching that. And then Central Coast School of Worship with Steve Swanson. This will be fantastic. October 11th through the 13th. All of these things are fantastic. But um, this will be good. It's not just for worship leaders, right, Cindy? <laughs> are you texting? No. Yeah, it's for anybody who wants to worship. <coughs> Gosh, my throat got dusty. Okay, next one. Ignite internship. We, this is the last week of our internship. And I said this at the conference, and I'm going to say it right this time. I am going to miss all of you. <laughs> um, but we do have another one starting in February. It's a two-month internship, and then another spring one next June, the end of June through August. So if you want to come here and hang out and learn about this place and what we do and um, get to sit in the worship, the teaching, just the prophetic, all the stuff we have going on here, look into that. We also have some housing available, limited housing. So first come, first serve. Bridge date night starts tom tomorrow. So that it's not too late to sign up. It's with John and Regina, five Tuesdays in a row. And I heard amazing results from last time. People, marriages were touched. Single people went and got information. Um, and not just information, but equipped to really, when they are married, to step into that. And it's also just for relationships, I think. You can gain a lot of things. So, okay. That's it. So God bless you guys and um, be healed in Jesus' name.